Springfield. I'd now like to give the floor to Louis Michel. I'm sure you know him. He was a former Commissioner for Development. He's now an MEP and President of the ACP EU Parliamentary Assembly, and he has very been very committed in Africa, working for peace peace negotiations in Africa, and I'd now like to give him the floor to give us his perspective. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Well, it's always difficult to follow speakers who have been so moving in their testimony. So uh, I am humble in what I will say, and what I may say will sound banal, perhaps, compared to what's been said by the previous speakers. But let me take this opportunity, nevertheless, to focus in on one aspect of this problem. And it's something we don't talk about very much. And it's perhaps because we shy away from it for cultural reasons or other regions, reasons. I don't know why we talk about um, it in this these terms. Now, violence against women, as has been said, is one of the major challenges of our time. But in some cultures, and we call them cultures, I know it's not perhaps the right word to use, but for lack of a better word, I use the word, and it is believed in those cultures that women do not have ownership of their own bodies. They are subject to paternal supervision and then marital supervision and there's a societal and cultural climate that surrounds them. And others have already said this, as Belgian uh, journalist has said, that this has become a battlefield and this is in the worst of cases. Now, it may seem obvious, it ought to be obvious, but each individual, first and foremost, belongs to himself or herself. And if there's anything else that they belong to, they belong to humanity and nothing else. That's my firm conviction. So this battle is about defending fundamental human rights, the rights of men and women, and concepts such as religion, politics, or cultural models, traditions, rites and rituals, they may well be honourable concepts in some cases, but in my view, there can be no case where such concepts can be invoked in order to question the basic right of a person's ownership of their own identity. Now, there are questions that have been identified. These concepts have been shaped not by women. They have been defined and shaped by men. When you look at religion, so you look at cultures, you don't see any basis for these beliefs, or for these pretexts, I call them. They're simply convenient pr practices that have been invented by men in order to defend themselves or to protect themselves and to cover up their fears. They're so in this debate, let's not engage in any kind of relativeness, relativism when it comes to these pretexts that are often invoked. Quite often it's a case of terrible, uh, grave errors being made in, in this way. And when I listened to Dr. McQuigge and other speakers, the uh, very, very um, passionate speak by speech by the uh, Nobel Prize laureate, I would say that this is a universal consideration. Anything else is uh, just artificial and it's uh, convenient for different interests. So 
Rothbrooks that said that you can't identify a human being by one characteristic, the color of the skin, um, whether they're bald or not. We are multifaceted beings. We have a number of different identities. And I believe that those who have the most off to offer to society are the ones who accept and acknowledge their many facets. So, to conclude, what I want to say is that the international community has a huge responsibility in this regard, and there's a great deal of national responsibility as well. Sometimes development policy has failed in the past. Physical and moral integrity needs to be defended by public powers, impartial, impartial neutral bodies, a neutral judiciary, a neutral educational system, a neutral administration, that's important, and access to culture. I think that culture is a driver for change, and that should be uh, borne in mind. I just come back from Addis Ababa and uh, where I participated in a meeting. I looked at some uh, statistics that had been published, and I learned that in Africa alone, natural resources produce 3.3 billion euros. So, 3.3 billion. I checked those figures because I initially thought I'd misunderstood the publication, but three, more than 3 billion euros that are not taxed. Can you just imagine what could be done in order to uh, build states, to create uh, uh, systems to guarantee human rights in countries, in these African countries? I think you have to recognize that there's a great deal of need in, term in developmental terms when I listen to the conditions that people like Dennis McGuigge work in in order to do their work and in order to su serve society to diminish that human suffering I really feel that it is a pertinent question we should be asking ourselves I, I was very very happy to hear what was said earlier on, it did strike me as a woman, uh, as a man. Someone said that if women are do politics, then they need to do it differently. They shouldn't try to emulate men and pretend to be men but, uh, and in this way be successful. No, they have something special to contribute to humanity. And I really believe that is important. It's true. National security, which is invoked in order to justify a number of different questions, is perpetuating a uh, status quo. So I just wanted to um, come back to the, say that. I didn't want to get um, bogged down in uh, repeating catchphrases, but I truly believe that uh, women's empowerment is a fundamental point. I don't, don't, don't want to get repetitive at this point, but I just wanted to say I was very, very struck and touched by the statements and uh, the comments we've heard from people who have shared their experiences, who have told us about their battles. Now, I know that some of these people when they do take the floor are absolutely fascinating to listen to. Merci, merci Louis Michel.